Hey guys, so about a million years ago, Chocola contacted me and asked if I would be interested in doing a review of their Chocola chalk markers. I told them I would have to do it my way and be as strict as I need to be, and they said that was fine. And they sent over the markers, and it's been like two months now, and I am terribly remiss, but I have been in con heck. So they sent over the Chocola Premium Wet Wipe Markers. I got 16 markers, 10 chalk pins, plus six metallic markers, as well as the Choc Chocola Platinum Series. And I have used chalk markers in the past, and part of the holdup was I was waiting for the right surface to come in, and I have a craft fair coming up, so I ordered these chalkboard signs off of Amazon. So I think I'm going to test these markers out on these Amazon chalkboard signs. Now, I did not pay for the Chocola chalk markers. Those were sent to me for the purposes of review. I did, however, pay for the chalkboards, which I am trying to get undone, but I guess I should do that on camera. So you guys have something to look at. And I'm trying not to scratch the surface with my nails, but that has already started. And these are just super cheap MDF boards. They're not even the plastic ones that you can get at Walmart. They come with a burlap string that is not even attached, I guess, because it's easier than, oh, I got three boards. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get these signs lettered for the Firefly Fest, uh, Artisan Fair, which is tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap these off camera and then we're gonna talk about the markers. All right, so in the Chalk Ola pack of 16, it is sealed with one of these wonderful tape dots, the sort where you need an X-Acto blade to get it open, which I just put down. Alrighty, got that slit open. And they look a lot like Posca markers. Um, oh, my Poscas are halfway across the room. Awesome. Now, Posca are water-based markers that are waterproof when dry, and they use, shoot. They use what they claim, that's what you get for reaching when you have a lavalier mic attached to you. Um, knock all of the things. But anyway, Posca markers use a proprietary formula in that they will not disclose what it is, but I think it might be a matte acrylic Posca markers. You guys can now see my lavalier cord, the tops of Posca markers. So this is a Posca marker. This is a chalk oil marker. They look like they purchased the same body. The Posca has a shaky. The chalk oil has a shaky. The Chocola has a bullet nib, at least these that we're looking at right now has a bullet nib. The Posca has a bullet nib, and the Chocola is going to need to be primed the same way you would need to prime a Posca marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime one of these markers on camera and then I will prime the rest of them off camera because I'm sure you guys don't wanna see me prime 16 markers. But before I do that, let's take a look at the metallic series. It comes in its own little box inside of the 16 piece set. So that's pretty cool. And I don't think that these are necessarily chalk markers. They are water-based, acid-free, low odor, and quick dry. So I assume these would be to add metallic accents to your chalk illustration. So maybe we should start with these first and design the plaques. And these are already primed. And I'm gonna do a swatch test for you guys in a couple of minutes, but I mean, I do need to get the regular Chocolas primed and ready. So we're gonna put these over here to the side. We're gonna take a look at the Platinum Series, which are huge markers. I mean, seriously, look at this. This is massive. I would need a bigger sign. And it has a huge felt nib. 
So this would be good for maybe writing on windows or on glass. I wonder if I can scrounge something like that up. And none of these are primed either. So just for comparison, this is the Platinum Series. This is the regular charcoal. The Platinum Series is gigantic and they both have Shaker Shakers in them. So let's go ahead and get one of the regular Chocolas primed on camera and one of the Platinum Chocolas primed on camera. And I'll have to find somewhere to put these. And I could prime straight on my Ink Essentials craft mat. It is a thing I could do, but I'm going to lay down just a strip of blue painter's tape and that'll save me some effort. Zoom way in. We've got the pink here and we're going to just prime. You can prime on the cap usually, but I'm just going to shake it up really good. Got to be smart about that. All right, because it is chalk and chalk can fall out of solution. And we prime it by pumping it a bunch of times until it writes. Perfect. And then we're going to store it upside down. And I'm going to prime one of these big puppies, the platinum. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it really good. And then. it until the chalk solution reaches the end of the nib. I think for these big ones, I'm just going to store them upside down too. There we go. So that's actually really, really, really cool. At least in my opinion, it's really cool. Um, I really like the big ones. I don't know what I'm going to use those for yet, but I really like the big ones. So I'm going to prime the rest of these and then I will check in with you guys. All right. I have got all of the markers pumped and primed. So I want to do an opacity test. And I thought this blue painters tape actually demonstrates how opaque these colors are and how vibrant they are. And it is quick to clean up and quick to remove. So why not? Anyway, I'm laying down a couple strips of this blue tape and I'm going to readjust the camera and I'm also going to use a Pigma BB, which is a waterproof wind dry black. And I'm just going to draw a black line down the center and give this a couple of minutes to dry. All right, so that has had a chance to dry. We're gonna start with the Chalk Ola Metallic Series. So I believe these are not actually chalk, they are metallic. And the only marker that outwardly looks metallic is the gold. Everything else though has a little bitty bit of glitter. No, not the magenta or the red, just the blue and the green have noticeable glitter. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull you guys in. Oh, nice, good coverage already. To be really honest, uh, I was sort of, I was sort of expecting crummy materials when I was contacted. That's why I made it a point to request an honest review um, because I don't want to be in a position where I'm trying to sugarcoat a poor product. But so far, these are pretty, pretty good. I am pretty satisfied with them. And I've used a, oh, and I have a silver. I've used a fair shake of um, chalk markers in the past since a lot of my signage Ooh, silver is really nice. A lot of my signage is chalkboards and uh, I've purchased many a terrible chalk marker by accident off of Amazon because I just didn't know better. So the colors you get are a beautiful teal, a red that's more like a pink, 
a sort of a skyish blue, a magenta that's a true magenta, a gold that's a little on the olive side, and a silver. And none of them are like stand out metallic, but they're nice and they're a little bit different than the colors offered here in the regular chocolate line. And all of these have been primed and are now writing. So this should go pretty quick. And the colors are extremely bright. Many of them sort of fall on the neon spectrum, which um, if you're buying chalk uh, markers for say your kids, that's gonna be great. They're gonna like these a lot. If you're buying these um, so you can do sort of like twee hipster <laughs> signs, and I say this laughing because that's exactly what I'm gonna do with these, um, the colors might be a little intense. And yes, there are probably ways you can blend them if you experiment with them enough. I know I can blend Posca markers with water and these are water-based. So perhaps the same principle applies. All right, so that is all 10 colors in the regular line. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the Platinum series and I'm not really sure what makes them Platinum. They do have a quick start guide. Uh, shake well with cap on and upright, remove cap. Write down with your marker, oh, that's three, sorry. Push, uh, press the tip to and fro multiple times to quickly get the ink flowing. Recap tightly after use and store in horizontal position, one to three minutes. Push down pen when you need extra ink. And to wash, you wipe, you must use wet cloth or Windex. So we're gonna, these are huge. I mean, like these would be great if like you're sure, ooh. I think I over primed it because it did leak and I did store it upside down for a minute just to get the chalk really flowing. Because with other brands of chalk markers, I've had a problem where I just can't get enough flow. And these larger chocolate markers are great to demonstrate just how opaque these are. And I mean, of course you would think, duh, they're chalk markers, but that's not always the case. I think the yellow is really the only one I over primed. So I will clean out that cap in a moment. And since they're putting down, I hate to say ink because they're not ink and it's not paint. Since they're putting down so much liquid chalk, um, I'm going to actually give these, stop the video and give these a few minutes dry once I finish swatching everything. And that'll give you guys a good idea of how opaque these are after they're dry. Sometimes things dry more opaque, sometimes they dry less opaque. So it's always good to experiment and test. And I will go clean out that yellow cap. All right, so the lighter colors dry, I mean the smaller markers dry almost immediately. So these are dry. These larger ones down here are definitely taking a minute, but we already discussed why that might be. So I have a small spritzer water and I know this is not the ideal surface for applying these, but I am kind of curious to see if it will come off. Now I do need to dig up a paper towel, so I will be right back. Alrighty, so I'm gonna try the direct spray approach. And zoom it, zoom in. And it looks like even on this not optimal surface, I can remove a lot of the chalk. So that gives me hope that on a better surface, I can remove all of it because I have also had many chalkboards where I couldn't get, or chalk markers where I couldn't get all the chalk off the chalkboard, even using water. So um, that is definitely something you want to be aware of, especially if you're a convention artist who uses chalkboards for signage and you need to update your prices. Because I was stuck underpricing myself for two years because I couldn't really justify buying new chalkboards and I couldn't remove the chalk off of my existing chalkboards. So we're gonna go ahead and put these back 
in their case, which is a nice case. It doesn't get destroyed when you open the package, which is a huge plus for me. because I don't like having my art supplies just floating around my studio. I like to be able to store them in the box they came in. And we're gonna go ahead and pull out one of those chalkboards. Ba -ba! And we're gonna pull out a white color pencil. This happens to be a color soft because I happen to be an artist who doesn't necessarily keep like other useful things like Crayolas, which are good to have when you, in this sort of a circumstance, uh, I don't keep those on hand. And I am actually working on my signage for tomorrow. And I'm gonna use washi tape to help me establish a straight line, if possible, come on, that is removable. And then I'm going to sketch my letters in because I am not one of those hand lettering guru channels. So I have to write it ahead of time because I haven't developed those skills yet. We want to sketch light. we want to pull out our markers. So I'm gonna go, this is a night event. So I think I'm gonna go fairly bright. All right, good flow so far, although these are brand new. And if you sketched with a chalk pencil first, you'd be able to get even finer That is a pretty crummy job of hand lettering. So I think I'm actually going to wipe it off and start again. And I think I'm gonna do this in time lapse because you guys probably know by now that it's hard for me to do a good job arting while talking. But I hope you have the basic idea. And this will be a good test for cleaning it. So this is just plain water and this is the rag that came. Oh, very nice. So it's a very good job of removing most of it. But as you guys can see, there is some ghosting over here. Maybe you need to use some Windex. That was the other thing they recommended. Or perhaps I need to let it dry all the way before erasing. Definitely getting some more white off, although not all of it. Okay. All right, let's get the big guns. Okay, so unfortunately we have our first tick mark against Chocola on these chalkboards that I ordered. I cannot remove all of the white chalk. So that is a problem. Let's try another surface, glass. 
So I remembered that I had some additional photo frames that I didn't have a chance to fill with art yet. So first thing we wanna do, wanna make sure we're starting with a clean surface. So since we have this glass cleaner handy, we're just gonna go ahead and wipe it down. And what's cool about glass that isn't as cool with chalkboards is that I can pull out my sketchbook and hand letter what I want, like pre-letter what I want in my sketchbook. So I'm gonna do just that. And these write like silk on glass. Keeping it straight is a little, I could have taped this down though. And I'm using a scrap sheet of paper to just help mitigate fingerprints. And this might be a problem because I didn't measure where the frame hits the glass. And I have a C that looks a bit like an E. So I'm gonna... Oh, that's a disaster. But who's surprised by that one? I'm one of those people who doesn't seem to know when to let well enough alone. So gonna let that dry. But it's a cool technique, right? You could use these for name hold name cards at weddings. So you could like even just go down to Dollar Tree and pick up a bunch of the mini frames and you could letter names on the glass. And I know this isn't a new idea, but it's a very popular idea, so I thought it would be worth testing out. I thought you guys would be interested. And you could use a sealing spray. I only have matte, unfortunately. But you could use a sealing spray so that this doesn't go all over the place. Especially if you're doing multiples. Heck, you could even put blanks behind it. It would look really cool. Unfortunately, corrections are not as easy to do as in other mediums, but that's okay. And it's going to take longer to dry because this is glass. Glass is non-porous, so it has to evaporate from the surface. Pull out those cool metallics. And that looks really neat on the glass. So I think to put this aside and let it dry. And return to the chalkboards. So 
This is the B side of that chalkboard. I really need a larger workspace than this. This fills up fast. Let's pull out a huge marker and see if we can't and the answer is no we can't it's just too big just does not really work at this size. Or rather, I'm just not enough of a hand letterer to be able to wield it at this size. So I'm sure, I'm sure there's somebody who could do a really cool job with this. And that's not me, not, not with that. So, I need to let that dry because that's going, oh, it looks really crummy actually. Wish I hadn't done that. Okay, fine. Got two more to go. Why not? And I will try to clean that one off, although I have extremely low hopes for it. Let's actually instead just use the big ones for accents since I am clearly not woman enough to handle them. All right. And it, to you guys, it probably looks very opaque, but to me, it looks a little thin. So I'm going to let this dry and give it another layer. And while that dries, we can come back to our clear glass sign. So off screen, I went ahead and I cut some beautiful washi paper to the correct size. And now I can't find my frame. All right, so. I'm trying to pick it up with just my fingernails because I'm trying to avoid smudging it, but that didn't seem to be in my cards. And this is just an inexpensive frame that I ordered from Amazon actually. And I spray painted it white because I didn't have any white ones at the price point I wanted to pay. There we go. So we have got a little somewhat cute table sign for tomorrow. And I'm going to wrap that in paper to prevent smudging. So when I try to layer the chalk, it will start to scratch it away in some areas, even though I did allow it to dry. So I guess you're probably limited to two thickly applied layers max. I'm sure if you were doing sort of a, a painterly technique with this, you could get more. But to be quite frank, <laughs> to be quite frank, um, I just really don't have time for that sort of in-depth experimentation at that point. And also your average user isn't going to do that. Let's try pumping it. Maybe part of the problem is just not enough flow.
Now, for me, with these sort of signs, I'll usually use something that's actually waterproof when fully dry, like Posca's, because I don't want to have to re-letter them, and I don't want them getting damaged in transit, because I do tend to use them at multiple shows. But since Chocola contacted me about reviewing these, I thought this would be a great opportunity to demonstrate them in sort of their natural use case, the way most people would want to use these. So let's go ahead and, oh, come on in. What would have been really cool is if I lent my tent via blacklight and lettered all of these with like UV reactive pigments and paints but then you wouldn't be able to see the watercolors. So, all right. And that's going to need to dry as well. So my overall thoughts on the Chalk Ola markers, the Platinum series, the Metallic series, and the regular Chalk Ola markers is that these are fairly decent chalk markers. They come in a wide variety of colors. I remember when the only color of chalk marker you could get was white. Um, they were a little hard to remove from certain surfaces. I was having some difficulty removing it from glass. I am having a lot of difficulty fully removing it from these chalkboard signs. But I think that if you are interested in chalkboard art or if you need to letter some signs yourself for whatever reason, or if you're interested on doing some lettering on glass, which seems like a lot of fun, these could be a really excellent tool for you and you might enjoy them. I am personally not somebody who is really big on chalkboard art anymore, at least not with chalk, because I travel so much I would have to re-letter my signs. And considering how these sort of signs take damage when you're traveling, and considering how these signs don't erase very well. Um, that could be a problem for me. That's the reason why I moved away from using actual chalk markers on my signs and I use like Posca or I use like Sharpie, etc. But um, these are perhaps a good solution if you, I mean, cause Posca will stay in your clothes. Um, it becomes waterproof when dry. So if you want something that's like a little more kid friendly or a lot more kid friendly, these might be the way to go. And I'm trying to fancy these sign or this sign up. I don't even know now if I'm gonna do the other one. Because I actually made signs um, before Cherry Blossom Festival. And they were just on poster board. They weren't even fancy because I didn't have time. I don't always use these sort of signs at conventions because they do take up space that I don't necessarily have. Okay, the metallic does not really want to write super well on top of the white. I have somebody booping the heck out of me. Okay. All right. So, and maybe the teal, the blue on the hot pink. We'll see. It also will pick it up. You can see it's on the blue marker. I don't know if that will cause permanent damage or what. I 
because it's basically cutting through that prior layer of chalk. Anyway, I hope you guys found this review helpful, useful. Keep in mind that Chocola did send me these chalk markers for free to review as fairly as possible. I did not pay for them out of pocket. And for me, uh, paying for things out of pocket certainly affects uh, how much I can recommend them because I'm a broke artist who is often smarting from not making enough money. But I hope you guys found this at least somewhat useful and inspiring. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching this. And I want to thank Chocola for sending me their chalk markers to review. I hope out of the two projects I demonstrated, you guys found one of them helpful or inspiring. If you enjoy this sort of content, don't forget to subscribe. I do art tutorials and art reviews twice a week, every week, often three times a week. And um, if you ever have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. So I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.